about a year and a half ago and I co-produced a film about my son and I being in an uh, inclusive theater group which means people with and without disabilities working together creatively. So we had an inclusive theater group in the Durham Chapel Hill area that we made a film about called A New Kind of Listening and I wanted to show the film in Asheville. So last spring, we screened the film in Asheville in March at Jubilee Community Church. And um, leading up to that, we had several meetings with community members, people from the arts community, people from the disability advocacy community, and other interested people. And we all decided that we wanted to take an inclusive arts project to uh, the next level, in other words, to make something really happen with inclusive arts. So using the inspiration of the film, bringing people together for the film, we had several meetings before and a couple of meetings after in a workshop. We, out of that came what we call Interweave Asheville, which is a group of people, again, with and without disabilities, some of the people have disabilities that are more obvious, some are more are hidden or somebody wouldn't know about it unless that person talked about their own personal experience. But we meet every month, actually on the third Tuesday of every month at Jubilee, and we talk about our experiences and our perspectives on life and we try out different artistic experiences. Um, we have different people leading the group um, and so we try out different things and that's what we've been doing now for about a year um, and it's just a very meaningful experience for those of us who come together and share and we have no money whatsoever. So that was exciting to me to say, well, a group of people could just get together and start something. We are interweave. We are interweave. We are interweave. We are interweave. Beautiful. Square. Yes, good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a square. It's a square. It's a circle. It's a circle. It's <laughs> so as a welcome to you, Camille, let's quickly say our names. Larry. Deb. Evie. Suzanne. Pat. Ryland. Lucas. Polly. Camille. Jessica. <laughs> welcome, welcome, each and every one of you in your humanity, in your creativity, in your laughter and your play and your artistry, in your toes, in your nose, in your laughter, may we laugh tonight. Welcome, welcome, every one of you, interweaving together our stories, our movements, our sounds. What will we interweave tonight? How will we come to know our stories? How will we come together? Let's find out. Energy. And if you agree, find your own way to reach, move, look towards Polly.
And now I'm going to let my voice fade away and let each of you on your own time say something, move, and then let everyone move toward you if they too agree that is what connects us as humans. Curiosity. I have facilitated two workshops that I've greatly enjoyed with the Interweave community. And this, this recent workshop really brought lots of joy. It was an improvisational journey of human connection. It was an invitation for us each to use expressive arts to share pieces of our personal story, our truth, and to come together by finding how these stories interconnect, interweave. We shared and explored different aspects of the human journey, what we have in common just by being human. And this included deep things and included light things. It included things such as we all have limitations and we all have freedoms. It included things such as we all breathe, we all have a heartbeat. And it included things such as we all play, we all love laughter. And this part of the workshop was indeed my highest delight. I love laughing in the company of others. I love laughing alone. <laughs> I love laughing often. And bringing laughter out of others when they might not normally have chosen to laugh is one of my favorite things to do. So yes, at one point in the workshop, I did command laughter. On the count of three, one, two, three, let's have a laugh-a-thon. And they obliged. It brings me great joy when others agree, <laughs> and agree to laugh especially. So we all laugh together, and then of course, really asking each person what brings you laughter in your life, and having that chorus of laughter respond. It was pleasurable. And in fact, because it's so pleasurable in my work life, I also bring it into my personal life. Just this weekend, I hosted a women's laughter party in honor of laughter being the world's best medicine that we all have access to. And it was a night of raucous laughter, pure enjoyment, and human bonding. <laughs> <laughs> onto this path out of a place of real challenge. Ten years ago, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and later rheumatoid arthritis. And my days were really, really full of pain. Pain and feeling lost and confused in a maze of all kinds of practitioners offering the cure. 
and me feeling as if I was reaching out in the dark desperately trying to find that cure and losing all sense of my own power in the meantime. It was a time of putting on a happy face when I was out in the world, but when I was alone crumbling into my bed, really feeling like any chance at living the life I dreamed of was now impossible. It was a time of disconnect, of disconnect from God, from my spiritual power. It was disconnect from friends and family who either saw me only through the lens of illness or saw me without the illness because I didn't want to talk about it and therefore didn't understand when I couldn't show up to social events or work commitments. So in this, in this time, I ended up in a place of really not being able to maintain a job, hardly being able to walk, and really feeling depressed. And this was when I made a big decision to begin my path, my healing journey, which involved all kinds of things, including expressive arts therapy, including spiritual discovery, including shaping my life and shaping it from a place of accepting myself and loving myself. That was the ground that was so important to walk on. So how did, how did creative, creative arts therapy help you? Hmm. The expressive arts process is amazing at letting you move from isolation to connection. You're able to bring any pain and darkness that's inside of you out through collage, poetry, mask making, any, any amount of creative modalities. And when this is out, it is contained in this creative art piece and shared with anybody you'd like to share it with. And most of all, you get to look at it in a way that feels, feels contained. It feels able to be understood. It feels, um, it feels like it no longer consumes you. So that's the first offering that expressive arts really has for you. Um, but with expressive arts comes a lot of stepping into your power, a lot of stepping into your truth as you express your own beauty. And with expressive arts, beauty is not a pretty picture or what anyone else would deem a valuable piece of art to hang on their wall. Beauty is honesty. It is the expression of truth, of who you authentically are. Often we forget what is deeply wise and true within us. Expressive arts offers countless mirrors to reflect back to you who you truly are. So whether you've just created a sand tray or you've just created a self-portrait series or a mandala collage, you can then begin to listen to your artwork. It acts as another party in the room with you, a party who has great wisdom. And you can begin to ask questions and listen. I love leading people through a journaling activity where they dialogue with their art creation and anytime they write the word I, I am, I want, I desire, it is the art speaking. Now the art is speaking on behalf of a part of you, but by giving over the voice to the art, it frees you to really express that part of yourself and to listen to it perhaps for the first time. So in expressive arts and in a creative wellness session, there is always a surprise that happens, an unexpected insight and discovery Walking the creative wellness path has tremendous benefits. Beginning on the path, you become very aware, aware of your strengths and aware of your challenges and aware mostly of what contributes to your challenges that you actually have control over, that you participate in creating. This awareness really highlights how mentally, emotionally, and spiritually we create to our own suffering. And by highlighting this, of course, the beauty of that is that we can inspire ourselves to make some changes in those areas. We can inspire ourselves to realize the kind of power we have over our experience in life. So after awareness, we dive deeply and promptly into acceptance. Acceptance 
sounds like this easy thing, but it often needs true commitment and true support in order to fully embrace all the parts we have within. And this is often such a profound place of transformation. When someone skips over acceptance and tries too quickly to change their life, these changes are often short-lived or hard to attain. But when a person seeks de sinks deeply into self-acceptance and from there self-love, I truly believe anything is possible. So once we've passed the stage of self-acceptance, we really tap into all inner capacities, all inner resources. And this is a place where I do a lot of educating. Educating around how someone can use their creativity in their life, how someone can develop self-care daily rituals, how someone can develop their relationship with divine source, God, whatever it is as their higher power, how someone can challenge their distorted thinking, how someone can end the struggle they have against what is. So when someone is discovering their internal capacities, this is awakening to power. This is a, an empowering process where someone begins to realize, I can handle life. I can handle the unknown of the future and whatever challenges may bring. This self-trust is very liberating. With self-trust, one can let go of tremendous fear and anxiety. After a person stands in their power in this way, we truly let them step into full joy of being a creator of their life. If their life was canvas, if their life was uh, a stage, if their life was a dance studio, what picture would they paint? What play would they produce? What dance would they choreograph that would bring them great joy to be part of and to witness? It is beautiful to see someone be truly in love with life, have their eyes wide open to the wonder and possibility in the mundane and wonder in, and possibility in the dreams that every day they step into actualizing. We are all laughing. Some are laughing on the floor. One person is standing. People are very still. We are earthlings, humming, sleeping, everything, rocking, dreaming, doing, dying. We are holding, swaying, humming a yes into stillness to affirm strength. Builder, move to tears, doing nothing, doing something, dream traveling, laughter, being funny, smiling, yes! We are curled into ourselves, opening into freedom, arms and hollering crescendos, giggles, whispers, gravity, jumping, Stuck, hopping, puddles like a child. The gravity suck flattens, sighs, stops. A child gallops, flaps, loose pants and giggles. We are untethered, released, expansive intertwined, connected, joined. We are interweave. We are interweave. We are interweave.
monthly meetings where different people would come in and uh, lead, for example, Jessica Chilton, um, the expressive arts therapist, led this meeting that um, was taped here and she has an amazing expressive arts therapy practice and brings people together through different creative activities that all seem to meld and, and just it's just amazing to me that the connection that can happen in that kind of experience. But um, we 
we'd like to continue doing those monthly meetings. Also, some people in our group would like to start doing something more intensive that would lead to performance. So that's an option. And if somebody who's interested in that might want to get involved and start working on performance. Um, I forget what else I was going to say. It's the beauty of editing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, we are working on getting some grants, possibly through Asheville Area Arts Council, and um, just taking the group in, in some different directions. Oh, the other thing um, that we would like to do is have some uh, more young adults or adults with developmental disabilities to join our, our group. And um, I know that's sometimes difficult with transportation issues, uh, but we want to help make that happen. So anyone who um, has developmental disabilities and is interested in joining the group, please contact me and so that we can try to work out uh, a way for you to participate. Masks offer wonderful ways to let an inner part of ourselves come out and to explore this inner part by becoming it fully, by wearing a mask, creating a costume, finding the voice of this part, creating a monologue. In this example, an individual was exploring their wise inner self, the wise one that does indeed know how to make clear choices in their life, that does indeed know how to navigate any challenge that life brings. And so really stepping into that through mask making and then creating a character lets them fully get in touch with that inner part of wisdom.